I thought, mm-hmm. and I sat there, and this is how I felt with my, like the money in the bank situation the other day. And I, I sat there and just kind of looked around my room and thought, what the fuck just happened? Mm-hmm. Like, are you joking? And I, I went on a massive rant, and I remember going into work the next day, and see, so you no know, one at my work watches it, and I turned around and went, sorry, I hate Brock Lesnar, and they went, who? Like, Brock Lesnar? He won the he won money in the bank last night, and they were like what and I was like no I'm serious this is not okay but like, this is really not and I was ranting the whole day about Brock Lesnar no one had a clue who I was on about <laughs> I was just like, like you, let, you let your frustration out to your colleagues I was so angry honestly I was I couldn't I couldn't get over it and I'll never get over it, I don't think I'll never get over that <laughs> well, it will me to this better to forever it haunt me forever I think uh like he's there's a lot of suggestion now that he's done with WWE, but I very much doubt it. I think he's done. Like, what uh, is there for him left? Do you know what I mean? Another what? payday. Yeah, I wouldn't mind that. <laughs> because as soon as as soon as soon things get back to a bit more normality, they'll want him for a Saudi show. Um, and they'll pay oh, through the nose for that's, it. And, that's my favourite time of the year, that one. Yeah, those, those get on my nerves. Uh, I've, I've, I, I kind of really... Since that whole deal they've done with the Saudi Arabia thing, for me, I've lost like a lot of faith in WWE as like a loyal fan because they cancelled like a Wembley show as well for it one year. And I had tickets for it. And I was just like, I'm never buying WWE tickets now. Now they've done that because they've kind of, they've just, they've taken the checkbook from Saudi and they're not going to, you know, stick with the loyal UK fans for however long they've been coming out for. So I, I, I've always, and, and, you know, like, the matches they put on and what was the year that the the guy won that rumble who's from there what's that guy's name oh, oh M- Mons- Mons- Mon- Mon- Mons- Mansour. Oh. Mansour, yeah. oh, oh, that's, that's this stuff thing we're not going to get Jess started on please Let's... yeah so I I, I I actually done that I was doing that review with uh, the other John Scott actually and I remember talking about that I think he was happy about it. No, I wasn't. I was no, not I... happy. Have you um have you seen The Undertaker's first chapter? No, first everyone stuff? keeps telling me and I haven't watched it yet. I've been at work. That's worth an hour of your time. Definitely. <laughs> an hour. It's only an hour. But yeah, no, that's that's the really... second person to know it said to me, Do you know what? Take an hour out of your life. Do you know what? I'm a busy girl these days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's good I, re- I really recommend it but i think there's like, i think there's five episodes i think that's coming out but yeah i really enjoyed that watching i've heard that stuff. it's really really good yeah and i do want to get involved right i don't want to get involved and i will get involved at one point well nice. you, you you know they haven't i mean you could binge watch the whole five episodes if you wait a while you know what i would be good at that oh, i'm a good yeah. person when it comes to yeah. binging so, so good. You, you could wait four more weeks and then they're all available. Yeah, do you know what? I could do that. I reckon I could. Mm, so, uh, but yeah, because that's the only problem is once I watched it, I was like, oh, I wish this was like Netflix where I could just watch all of them in one go, but I've got to wait another week. So I don't, I do think, I'm gonna, I don't think I'm going to watch next week. I think I'm going to like keep at least two <laughs> so I can watch two hours worth of trees, it. Trees, trees. Take yourself. your two hours out of your day. <laughs> Take your two hours out. Exactly. So that's that's what I'm gonna do now. It's the first time where he's really exposed himself now as like Mark Calloway, mm. and he doesn't seem to be too bothered. Um, there is the most just bloody retire properly. That's what. This is how I feel. Uh, I cried a couple of years ago when he left his bloody hat and jacket in the room. Do you know what I mean? Like what a um, waste of tears. What a waste. Yeah, and then obviously since then I've seen him go up against Goldberg and that horrendous thing with John Cena last year. Um, the um, do you know it felt the thing with the Undertaker? It felt felt like. Have you seen Prison Break? I have. You know when he spoilers to anybody that hasn't seen Prison Break. Yeah, turn off now. <laughs> turn off now. <laughs> when he returned and I wasted them tears. Oh yeah, well when dead. she returned as well. Don't oh, forget like, that. That's ridiculous as well. When her head in a box at one point. Yeah. Oh, no, like, it's a made-up one. Sorry, you died? Like, how come you're here again? There's, oh. there's things like that really, really... And I cry for no reason. Like, when 
Uh, sorry, have you seen The Walking Dead as well? <laughs> I haven't seen The Walking Dead, but for okay, anybody well. that hasn't either, and then you want to watch it, turn off now as well. <laughs> um, Rick doesn't actually die, so I cried my eyes out, cried, yeah. and then he was alive. I was like, are you sorry? Are you joking me? Why do that? That's how I felt. Like The amount of times Undertaker's done, he's had enough, and then he's back in... I thought I thought he was going to be in the money in the bank the other day. I really did. <laughs> when no. I was going to get a pop out of that coffin, I thought he was going to be there. I was oh. sitting there. My hand was over my over my face, thinking, "There he is. He's he's coming. He's coming." I just had it in my head. And I thought he's going to just make one little appearance. But yeah. No, not, uh, I don't I'm glad think he. I'm glad he wasn't there at this one, but. I, yeah. I, the thing is with watching that documentary, it's kind of like sad because he knows himself what's happening. Um, but it's like he can't, he, he just, I, I blame Vince as well because it's like Vince keep ringing him up every year to do the bloody thing. So it's like dangling a piece of cheese, you know, <laughs> it's going to keep saying, yeah, isn't he? you know, he's a freaking wrestler. But um, you know what? You bring up prison break just infuriates me even more now. You've made me, if you, I loved I loved Prison Break season one, absolutely loved it. Watched it three, <laughs> four, five <laughs> times. You infuriated me now. You have, and then I, I watched Prison the Break. second season, and to me, it started to lose the plot a little bit. Even though I was really looking forward to it because I thought I want to see what these characters do on the outside. Season, right? <laughs> I'm not gonna watch anymore. I didn't watch I that revamped version. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not. You know, why did they get start talking about this bloody Priscilla thing for about three or four episodes, yeah, seasons? I was like, what the hell has this got to do with Prison Break? Um, yeah, I just got, I just got annoyed with it by the end, Prison Break. But I really loved the first season. Yeah. But then it just lost its plot for me, and like the characters started to do things that I thought this is not what. <laughs> the characters should be doing i used to love teabag for he was brilliant I love teabag but then he got too gimmicky for me in the end and then i started to see him crop up in films and he was teabag <laughs> <laughs> That's, this is literally like the whole harry potter situation like no, you don't rack this. why is harry potter in the woman in black <laughs> like, you know I mean? that's what happens to some actors though right yeah. they get they get put in a in that lid and then that's it they're like that's all they're going to get that's, for the rest of their career forever. like yeah there's, there's so many people like that it's like um stifler from like <laughs> from <laughs> you know and him forever. what's his name as well out of um out of that film what's his name sean sean william scott yeah that's the right guy isn't it is that who i'm thinking of yeah who's the guy from american Pie? he i've not seen him in anything for ages but he got again he was like the same guy in everything. I mean, he was in Final Destination, the same <laughs> character in that film. <laughs> like, literally, like, you, you go to acting school and they're like, oh, who can you play? And you just like, I play this, this and this, and it's just the same person. <laughs> it's hard to get out of it as well. Like, once you're labelled as a certain thing, it's really difficult to get yourself out of it. Now, you're, are you a Tom Cruise fan? I do like Tom Cruise. Yeah, I wouldn't say. Do you like the the Mission Impossible, that type of stuff that he does? Yeah, I feel like they should have stopped as well. Well, he's in his fifties now, and he's knocking those films out, and he's doing things that like he does all the stunts himself. I'm thinking, do you know what? Like, I struggle to walk somewhere sometimes, (laughs) and And he's jumping buildings. I'm not half his age, and he's jumping buildings and breaking his leg. Did you see that? He yeah, jumped, I saw that, yeah. broke his leg, and I was like, Jesus Christ. And like, still got that. up. Still got up, and you see the limp. <laughs> Imagine. It's like, I'm the man. I'm neck. doing this. I'm, I'm the man. I'm going to show my stuff. Yeah, he's just... And now, um, have you seen his latest project that he's going to do? Oh, I'm scared. What is it? He should be scared. He's he's teaming up with... um, What's that guy's name? Elon Musk. And oh, he's the... going to... He's going to do a filming from space. He's got permission. <laughs> They're going to do it. They're going to get footage from space. It's going to be the first film ever in history to have, to be filmed and shot in space. Oh, OK, Tom. <laughs> yeah. Only Tom Cruise could think of doing something like that. Only Tom Cruise could only do t- that. I don't know. If, I don't think it's going to be a Mission Impossible. I think it's going to be something completely to itself. But he's going to be in it. And I know he's directing. So... 
it's oh gonna... fuck. No, yeah. I do like Tom Cruise. Bless him. Do you know what I do you know what I like though? I watch um, a lot of interviews like on like Graham Norton and Jonathan mm-hmm. Ross and things like that. And I get so fascinated with watching celebrities and that's how I judge them. Mm-hmm. Like, right, like, on Graham Norton. Like, huh? Well Tom Cruise Tom Cruise is is when you watch him, mm. he's he's the way he deals with people he rem- like i've heard he remembers everybody's names no yeah matter. yeah sort of, he's very good at that now i don't yeah. know if that's something that he's trained in and it's just become <laughs> like second nature because some people are like that they're very good at making you feel special and yeah. they look at you they'll they'll make eye contact or something and i think there's a bit of that in him that makes you like drawn to him in that way like i'm sure he's that sort of but for me tom cruise i'm looking at him like he's he's at his age i'm thinking when does he reach that age where i suddenly see tom cruise as a a much older mature Mm. guy than he should be like i don't know i don't know if it's gonna happen (laughs) yeah i I mean like watching watching him on like interviews and things and he he comes across lovely like i love anybody that that's if if you on an interview if you come across funny that's it i don't like you anymore there's like certain people that i literally am so like oh like i literally don't like you because just the way they come across but he's someone that comes across so nice we do like it i like well i love disney i don't oh really you see i'm more of a i, I like my pixar Oh, the Pixar stuff. It's so the thing with Disney, um, even when I was a kid, it used to mm. wind me up. So <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't your typical probably type of kid that went to watch a film. I see my type of films when I was a child I really enjoyed was a film I don't know, you might have heard of it. They don't re- they rarely show it on TV because it scares kids too much. But I I was enthralled by it. It was like a real eye opener for me. And it was watership down with the rabbits. You know what I'm talking God, about, yeah? yeah? Yeah, I loved that. I thought it was bloody brilliant. I thought that's realistic that, you know, there was blood in it. There was like some <laughs> religious angle in it as well. And it, it really... Did you have an exorcism when you were a child? <laughs> I don't know what it was, but I was just like, this is, this is realistic. This is better. Then I went a week later and watched a bloody, um, you know, they used to do like, well, uh, you wouldn't know, but like in my time, they used to like redo, like they used to re, um, like re-release old films from Disney. And one of them was Pinocchio, right? right. So they re-released that. I went to watch the bloody film and everyone was coming out. I remember all the kids around me were like, Oh, that was so good. He's a real boy now. You know, it's the big talking point at the end of it. Yeah, he's a wooden boy. Spoiler alert for people that hasn't seen that bloody film, but Pinocchio, right? You should know it by now. <laughs> if you don't know, Pinocchio is get to know him. Right? Yeah, get to know him. But um, yeah, he's a wooden boy. He's become a real one. And that was a big talking <laughs> thing outside. Now, I wasn't. Now, you've seen that film, yeah? <laughs> Sorry, I'll just, just you explain to what Pinocchio is. He's a wooden boy. <laughs> Well, yeah, the, 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 the thing with me, when I come out, I wasn't I wasn't thinking, scratching my head, thinking about the whole he's become a real boy thing. That wasn't the miracle for me. There was another miracle in that film. And I, and I, I suggest anybody goes back and watches this, all right, for the same, the same thing that I saw. I saw um, a, talk, a, a cat and a fox in a hat and coats talking to Pinocchio. They were the only, the only um, animal speaking things in the entire film and i was like what this is the miracle uh the the part where um <laughs> pinocchio's pinocchio's taken by some guy that's going to have him on a stage i wouldn't have grabbed the bloody wooden boy i'd have grabbed the fox and the the cat that was talking to me dressed in human clothes i was like that's the miracle we've got evolved cat and an evolved fox talking um, because it, because and there was no consistency because you remember Cleo and this other thing Figaro they didn't speak <laughs> so I was like what is happening so I, the consistency of that film <laughs> it, it did my head in it did my head in and then the the next film I went to see was Beauty and the Beast and I come out of that thinking like Belle was a bloody uh, an idiot because I was I thought why why is she with this guy who's domestic abuse he's shouting at her you know he's not learned his lesson really and she's falling in love with this 
odd looking thing as a bear. creature <laughs> yeah <laughs> there's something wrong with her and I was a huge Gaston fan I was like all right he's obnoxious but come on um he wanted to be with her he'd have given her a good you know chance in life I'm sure 